Hi, Deanne Obadoya again, and before we move on to some specific uh, nutrition recommendations, I do want to go over a few key parts of nutrition terminology. So these three terms here are all dietary reference intake values. So basically, if I want to, let's say I'm a dietitian or I am working with someone and I want to find out if they're making, they're getting enough of what they need, but not too much. I need reference values to compare their diet to. So if I want to know if their vitamin A is adequate, if I want to know if their sodium is excessive, I have to have reference values to compare it to. Like finding out how much they consume is not enough. And that's what these DRIs do. They're scientifically determined reference values that tell us, you know, what kind of um, range of nutrient intake is going to promote health. So for instance, in my nutrition class, maybe K110, when my students do a diet analysis, they get a value for a bunch of different nutrients in their diet, and then they compare that value to typically the RDA or the adequate intake value to see if something is uh, adequate. Okay, so let's say I consume, let's say the RDA for something, I'll get back to clarify between the two, let's say the RDA for something is 100, okay, and I consume 90. I would say you are milligrams. I would say you're probably adequate for that thing because you're close to the RDA. You're around it. You don't have to hit it exactly. There's a margin of safety around them, okay? The RDA is more scientifically determined than the adequate intake, but they're used the same way. I use both of them to determine, am I more or less around how much I should be consuming for a particular nutrient, okay? So, we use those, some nutrients, some vitamins and minerals, for instance, have an RDA, while some have an adequate intake. They don't have both, okay? But they're both like the, are you getting enough value? We also not just want to know if you're getting enough, we also want to know if you're getting too much. For instance, if we consume consistently consume more sodium than we need, then that puts at us at a higher risk of things like uh, high blood pressure, okay, or certain intestinal issues. So we want to know beyond which level is too much. That's the upper limit or more, we often say, the tolerable upper limit. Okay, so to find out if someone's adequate for something, we want to make sure that they're getting enough, but not too much. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. Sorry, I guess see these slides advance. <laughs> Another important term, I'll kind of come back to that slide there, is this term of nutrient density. Nutrient density basically looks at the quantity of various nutrients within a food for the amount of calories in that food. So for instance, if I'm consuming 100 calories of milk versus 100 calories of Coca-Cola, that 100 calories of milk is going to be more nutrient dense. I'm going to have a lot more nutrients in there for that 100 calories I consumed. Okay. So for instance, if I consume 100 calories of milk, I'm getting um, vitamin D, I'm getting calcium, I'm getting magnesium, I'm getting lactose, I'm getting certain lipids, I'm getting water. If I'm consuming 100 kilocalories of Coca-Cola, I'm getting water and sugar. That's it. So it's less nutrient dense. Okay. So this slide here also kind of speaks to this concept of nutrient density, looking at, you know, different caloric intakes of different um, beverages in this case and looking at how much nutrients each of those provide. So for instance, like I just talked about, that milk is going to have a lot of different nutrients for the amount of calories consumed. Whereas if I were to consume bottled iced tea or Coca-Cola, I'm basically just getting sugar. And this slide here kind of ties in this nutrient density slide plus this uh, uh, dietary reference intake slide because when it says 12%, what I mean is I'm getting 12% of my RDA for calcium. Okay, so that's the recommended daily intake, in this case the RDA. And since I'm getting 570 milligrams, that's about 12% of the RDA. Okay, so just kind of combining a couple concepts here. 
Other terms to clarify include the terms foods versus supplements. So foods are, I think we know what foods are, <laughs> and we can get um, all of our different nutrients from our foods. We can also sometimes get f uh, our nutrients from supplements as well, like vitamin and mineral capsules or from like powders, etc. Supplements can be helpful for individuals that have a hard time getting their, their RDAs or their AIs um, from food alone. But quite honestly, if we are getting a very, very diet, a very diet, we're consuming enough, we're eating a variety of food, we can get everything we need from food. Supplements, the, big, the biggest issue with supplements is A, they can be expensive, <laughs> and B, sometimes people overdo it, they overconsume them. Consuming extra amount of supplements doesn't give you extra benefits. Their main goal is to make up for nutrition, nutri nutrient deficiencies. Okay. The other issue with uh, supplements is we are way more likely to get into symptoms of toxicity from supplements than from regular foods. Okay. So I'm not saying not to consume supplements, but don't don't do them just because. <laughs> so you might want to like wash your diet on, um, like analyze your diet on MyFitnessPal for a few weeks, see if you're deficient in anything, and then maybe consider consuming supplements in consultation, maybe with your uh, health professionals. Um, but we don't recommend just consuming supplements uh, willy-nilly <laughs> for just anyone, although a multivitamin probably can't hurt. We just don't want to overdo it. So this quick little lecture was to just give you some key terms in nutrition and then we're going to come back in the next section to talk about uh, food recommendations and the Canadian food. I'll see you then.